All right, so this is the second road trip in the Buick. The Beast, or as we've sometimes started referring to it as the aircraft carrier. Um, it is huge, but uh, the exhaust gaskets are sealed. It sounds, sounds kind of boring-ish. We're waiting for the exhaust to, well, we're not waiting for anything, but when we get the chance, we're gonna build the exhaust. It's gonna be pretty cool, make more horsepower because the single exhaust is, is crappy. I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm gonna do headers because headers tend to leak, um, but we may, we may, we may do it because that extra 20, 25 horsepower may be worth it. On an engine this big, especially a high compression one where you're not making 220 horsepower, you're making a factory 370 at the crank without accessories, you know, it's a little bit less than that, but you get the idea. Um, you, you could use headers. There's substantial improvement. We're not talking 510 horsepower like you would on a 302. Even a 302, you get long tube headers, they make quite a bit of power. Not alone, but they help you build power. But anyways, I digress. So we're gonna go, and we're gonna go pick up the Family 67 Tempest. On the way, we're gonna go see Hoover Dam with Valerka. It's our first father and son road trip, huh? Just us. We got like five gallons of oil with us. Enough so we have an emergency jug that will fill the entire crankcase. We are not to touch that. If we are ever to touch that, then we immediately have to go get more oil. But... At least we got an extra can. Oh, we got lots of extra cans. And we got a little bit of transmission fluid. Gave me a scare earlier. We were going to get cake and stuff like that. And yeah. It slipped into neutral and I was like, no. But thankfully I put it into low and tested it out through all the gears. It hasn't been any trouble since. So I think what it was is somebody bumped the, uh, the selector lever. But yeah. Out on the road. First real road trip since rebuilding the top end. I tighten up a few bolts. Um, make sure there's no oil leaks in my timing cover. Stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Crossing the border into Nevada pretty soon. In about 15 miles. At the Hoover Dam. What do you think, Valera? I like it. Isn't this crazy? That's what I love about driving all over America. You see some really beautiful spots. Yeah. This would be a good area to drive a four-wheeler dirt bike. Formula dirt bike. Ha! See, you like adventure. In about 15 minutes, we're going to go see the Hoover Dam. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. No, 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 that's boring. Let's go. Let's go see the real sights. Hoover Dam. What? Is this a cliff? Yeah, that's a cliff. Wow. Hoover Dam. No, don't climb. Look through here. What do you think, Valera? I like it. You like being on road trips? Mm -hmm. Long, boring nothingness and a little bit of excitement. Which one? That one that's... Then the dam and then that's... Okay, you see how tall the dam is? Yeah. That's how deep the lake is. That's too deep. Well, maybe not that deep, but almost that deep. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Look, there's cars down there. Hmm. There's two boats over there down there. There's what? Two boats over there. Two boats? Yeah. Way down there. Yep. Yeah. There is. You want to read my story? 
So. The question is. How many bricks did they use to make the whole The what? How many bricks did, bricks did they use to make the river dam? Oh, millions of bricks. Did they use pieces of wood? No. No pieces of wood. But will the river dam just break? Uh, no, you see, see how it's curved? So it's curved that way so it could take more pressure. So, I stopped by a customer and dropped off a differential that I sold them uh, at a pretty decent price. I priced it fairly. Um, and I also, you know, gave him his kit that he paid for. Um, and then I used the shipping that he paid for as well for gas, which I think is fair. And dropped it off in person, met the guy. It was pretty cool. He was a real cool guy. And we'll see how it works out. It's a V12 powered Datsun. It's gonna be a pretty wild project. Now, it may not make as much power as a Turbo LS, really. It, at least not off the bat. But the reality of it is, it'll sound so sweet. So it's the one GZ Toyota motor, has twin ECUs, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. But he's a, he's a bright young lad and he's, pretty ambitious with this project so I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out all right so we're pretty much out of Utah <clears throat> other than oil consumption it's uneventful but we're getting to see a lot of this beautiful countryside which is pretty cool unfortunately Utah was mostly nighttime so not a whole lot for us to see there and this trip is taking quite some time in order to keep oil consumption down we're going pretty slow even the truckers are passing us but just taking in the sights relaxing i'm not trying to beat up the buick any more than i have to because it's going to be loaded pretty heavily on the way back but it's happy as long as they keep it fed with oil and gas premium gas Milkshake, onion rings, hamburgers, makings of an excellent road trip. Ooh, chasing phantom vibrations. I was making sure these adapters weren't doing anything crazy. Thankfully they weren't. I found a broken exhaust mount. Can you repair 
I'll put some wire on it with these pliers. Oh, will it work? I don't know. It's not gonna fall off, but I'm gonna. If it if it stops vibrating, then I'll know. It was just the exhaust. You know. Topped off on oil, topped off on fuel. I use a piece of coat hanger to hang up that exhaust hanger. At least some, I didn't have the proper size bolt. This is a good sign. We're gonna see. Well, you can't really see it on the camera, but it's pretty much a blizzard, not quite the beginnings of one, at least in the valley. I have an overpass to go through and hopefully it's not closed. Well, as in hopefully it's clear. If it's closed because it's not clear, then I'll just wait it out, I guess. So close. <laughs> I only got 277 miles to go. At least at this part of the trip. All right, so little bit of a nap. Safety first, guys. Besides, who's in a hurry? Driving a Buick that sucks down oil all the time and Let's clear the plugs. A couple of the plugs are fouled. Got about 180 miles to go, three hours. Slow it down. At least you can see where you're going. Yeah, it's, it's daytime. It's not freezing cold anymore. Like, like, like tonight. Like last night. Well, we were warming the car because we kept the car running, but then we burned a bunch of oil and a bunch of gas. Hope it's open. Yes, there's lots of people parked. I mean it's open. Doesn't mean it's open. Oh. It's nah, it's just a waterfall. Look. Doesn't smell strange. Oh, waterfall. 
Yeah, there's that big waterfall. Whoa! Yeah. I did not see that. Let's go find a parking spot so we can go look at it. Waterfall. Yeah? Multnomah Falls. It's just like the waterfall in Hawaii. That big one? It's because it's foam. It's foam? Well, you know, water hitting... It's air bubbles and stuff. That's why it looks white. So it hits two different spots. Oh, you mean to the right, to the other side? No, I meant like it comes down, and then it flows, and then it comes down again. Oh, him? Yeah, he's picking trash up to make sure people don't litter. Well, he doesn't make sure people don't litter. He picks up after they litter. Litter is when people are stupid and they throw stuff. Like cigarettes? Like cigarettes. Or... Pepsi cans or something. Okay, look on your side. What did you think of the waterfall? I liked it. You love it? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh -huh. There's another one. There's another one. There's plenty. There's lots and lots. And this lake right here, sometimes the other guys used to catch fish. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're heading back. How was Grandpa? Yeah. Yeah? You enjoyed your stay there? Yeah. All right, that's awesome. So, we never did figure out what that phantom uh, vibration was. I changed my U-joints, but the U-joints I pulled out weren't bad. I, uh, I pulled apart the rear end. I didn't actually break the torque on the, uh, the pinion nut. But the pinion rotated freely, uh, had the proper preload. I mean, smooth, no no burrs in the in the gears. They had a little bit of scuffing on the ring and pinion, but I mean, so it is worn. But there's no deflection on the pinion, which would you know explain the uh, on and off throttle differences in the vibration. I put, you know, fresh diff fluid in it, looked over, uh, so now I found out what gear ratio this is, which is why it's not happy above 70. It's 323s with the limited slip, so it's actually a really well-optioned car other than the manual windows. Uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty good. We hooked up the Tempest with a tow bar, and we tried flat towing it, but because of the caster of the wheels, it didn't recenter well, so on really tight turns, the wheels would go the opposite direction of where you needed them to go. You'd have to drag it through the turn and go outside, turn the steering wheel properly. I mean, it would it would track on decent turns. I tried pushing the Buick around. The Buick's really heavy, so that didn't really matter. But I don't know. Flat towing the Tempest just wasn't safe, at least until I update the suspension. Maybe it was the caster, maybe it was other things. But I was going, I was driving around in the middle of the night, trying to get a feel for it, see if it was gonna be safe. And no kidding, on the freeway at 41 miles an hour, literally nobody else on the road, I lose a wheel. <laughs> so I spend the night with the car, Valerica, he went back to grandpa's house, 
because you know we're only 20 miles away and then in the morning i got a u-haul and it's been smooth sailing since and it really it's not costing me that much to go one way it's like 284 including the 40 dollar damage waiver so yeah it's dolly's the way to go i'm gonna try to save up a little money and buy a heavy duty dolly myself they don't need registration they tow smooth and they take up hardly no space so the only the only drawback with the dolly is the turning radius is just horrendous so yeah Yeah. All right, well, come on, let's go. All right, so me and little guy here checked out the Air Museum. Really cool, highly recommended. Uh, museums are kind of the kind of thing you just have to go see for yourself, so I didn't really take any videos there. There's, there'd be no point. They've all seen pictures of F-104 Starfighters, which was pretty epic. I've never seen one in person until today, or say the DR-1, the Fokker triplane. But I will say it's a really pretty cool museum that you guys really should check out if you're in the area. It's worth it's worth it, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't know he didn't pay for it, but it's so worth it. <laughs> What'd you see there that was really cool? What did you like? Everything was really cool. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you like the blue triplane? You like the jet planes? Do you like that Warhawk, yeah. the P forty? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And they had an Alice in there on display. Tons of horsepower, tons of cubic inches, big old V twelve. Alrighty, continue our trip, meandering around uh, Idaho before we go to Utah. We're being passed by an Oldsmobile Whoa. on a trailer. Anyways, so we're in the mountains of Utah, south of Salt Lake City, somewhere out there. Hamburgers and Game Boy. Yeah. Little guys playing Zelda, 1998 version. Highly collectible for all you nerds out there, by the way. Like myself. We're on our way to see Kyle. Sell him the brakes off the Datsun that I don't need because I'm going with a different size and then past Las Vegas, and we're gonna be home. Well, sun's setting again in the beautiful Southern Utah mountains. About to meet Kyle, give him his breaks, and uh, yeah, with the peak, the yeah, exit 33 here. So yeah, a few more exits. Anyways, um, but yeah, the, the highest peak we climbed today was 6,600 feet elevation. And that's pretty significant considering this whole entire rig weighs 11,300 with me, him, and you know, tank of gas and everything else here. So that says a lot about the, uh, the wagon itself and how useful it is as a work truck. I'm really considering putting a, uh, or building a rooftop tent for it. it would be kind of fun. Plus useful because my knees and elbows, they really ache. A couple days of not being able to stretch them out for more than, you know, uh, for very long. It's just, it's no good. 